All right, so it's been about an hour and a half after the pour. We're waiting for the slab to firm up so we can stamp it. And one way we check it is we just press into it with our fingers and just see how firm the surface is getting. You can see we've done it a little bit already right there. But basically we just push down with our fingers. Right now I can still push in pretty easily about three eighths of an inch. So that tells me it's not quite ready yet. We got probably another half an hour. We'll come back and check it again. We want it to be a little bit firmer than that before we start stamping. All right, so it's getting close to time to stamp. Um, it's been about almost two hours after the pour. A couple things we do before we stamp is we mag float the surface to get out the bow float lines, any little imperfections, we wanna fix those. And then we also run an edger around the boards to round that outside edge off, make it a little bit stronger. As you can see, I'll show you. You can see the bow float lines in that from bow float and that's pretty normal. So we want to get those bull float lines out. We want to fill in any little rock holes the bull float didn't get. And then we're going to run that edger across the board. I'll show you how we do that. This is the edger we use. Just a simple little brass edger. It's about six inches by two and three quarter inches. It's got about a three eighths inch round to it right here. So I'm just going to round those edges off with this. We're going to mag, we're going to mag out the edge mark anyway. We just want to round the edge off. So we got the edges all edged. Now we're gonna use a funny float, mag out the surface so we can get all the bow float lines out. Hey guys, so this is going to be a really nice looking stamp concrete patio. Right now, Darren, Luke, and I are just getting it ready for stamping. It's The concrete's firming up, the sun's hitting it pretty good, and we're all just kind of mag floating the surface out. This is what we do on all our stamp concrete projects, and if we can reach them all from the outside like this, it makes it even easier. If not, then sometimes we'll have to get on our concrete skids and somebody will have to get out there and mag float it out you know on the skids but right now we can reach quite a bit of it with that funny float so Darren's kind of hitting it with the funny float Luke and I were magging the edges out as far as we could and we're just getting ready you know stamping's a process and you got to be ready for it when it goes it goes you only have a certain amount of time from get to one end to the other so hang on here a minute we're going to get ready to go all right so it's about two hours after the pour the stuff firming up out here where the sun's been hitting for a while stop putting the dust to it so we're putting the release powder to it and again we use the release powder to keep the stamps from sticking to the surface and it also adds a secondary antiquing color to it and this is basically what we what we do is we just use a brush and we just powder it on yeah that's one thing oh look at that piece of poly come flying off the house it's a little windy out here today which makes throwing that powdered release even a little bit trickier you definitely got to wear a mask but that stuff can be quite messy. You know, it's always a debate. Do we want to use the powder today or do we use the liquid release with the powder tint in it to color it? Um, we just decided to use the powder on this one today. Some people like the look of the powder afterwards and some people, you know, just prefer a little less messy and use the liquid. But either way, we do both ways. We kind of like both ways. Just kind of depends on what we're doing that day is making the decision on what type of the release we'll use. But Darren was finishing up magging that piece in the shade. That piece in the shade up by the house isn't curing up too good. So that's going to that's gonna cause us to have to wait a little bit on that piece. But in the meantime, the sun's been beating on this other edge here. And Luke and I are coming down this edge. Now we're using the rock, just the rock texture 
stamps today, these are one of the easiest stamps to use if you're first starting out stamping. They don't really have any any pattern you need to go by. You can turn them any which way you want. You can you can turn them diagonal. All you really need to do is just overlap them a little bit and then just watch yourself as you as you pull one up and move it. You know, just make sure you're not leaving any lap lines in the previous one you just pulled up. So we got a couple different types of this stone texture. We have the big red ones there, then we have a little bit smaller blue ones. And that just allows us to have more stamps on the slab at once. It just makes it a little bit easier for stamping. I mean, you could really, you could almost do this with just two of those red ones if it was, if you were doing it yourself. But the more you have, the more you can lay out at once, a little bit easier it is to get the thing stamped. And we, we like stamping, you know, generally with three guys, it makes it pretty easy. Two guys can kind of focus on doing the stamping part. One guy can kind of focus on doing the edges and, you know, just making sure the guys on the slab have what they need. If they need more release, you can get a more release, things like that. It goes pretty quick with three guys that know what they're doing. But two guys, two guys could definitely do something like this on their own. If, if you're thinking of stamping concrete, you know, I've got a course in the Concrete Underground, which I'll have a link down below for. You know, you can join that Concrete Underground, and then there is my Stamp Concrete course that'll teach you step by step just how to do this stuff if you've never done it before and you want to learn. Or if you do concrete already, but you don't do stamping, it's a nice add on. Um, you can really make a lot of money stamping concrete if you're good at it because you can get probably eight or ten times more per square foot to do stamp concrete than you can just doing regular, you know, broom finish patios and stuff like that. So you can check that out if you want. You can see I'm up there now on the shade with my knee boards, kind of mag floating that out. We had to let that set up a little bit longer, but I want to get it. I want to get it before the guys get any powdered release on it. So I got to get it magged out before they broadcast that release. Because you can't, once you broadcast that release on the slab, you can't mag float that stuff in. You can see they're just working their way down. Kind of what, kind of the same way the sun's moving on this. You know, it was hitting that outside edge first. And then as the sun gets higher, the shade gets closer to the house. So that's kind of the same way the slab is setting up. So that's kind of the same way we're stamping it too, is just in the same pattern the sun is hitting it. And it's work everything's working out pretty good. The wind died down a little bit, so it's not too too dusty. The trouble with the dust a little bit is you know, it goes everywhere, so you're gonna get some on the house, you're gonna get some on anything that's close by, <laughs> and you're definitely gonna get a lot on yourself. But it does wash off afterwards with Dawn dish detergent. And if you get some, like, let's say you get some on that trim around the door, around the window, you can take those Clorox wipe, wiping, you know, pads, or they come in the little jar, those Clorox wiping pads you usually have in the kitchen, and those will wipe that dust right off and clean it right off really easy. You can see how as them guys go, they're kind of rotating the stamping mats a little bit so they don't have the exact same pattern every single time they lay it down they'll rotate it 90 degrees or 180 degrees and just keep changing that up and then uh, the blue textured stamps have a tiny little bit different texture than the red ones do too so that helps to you know keep working them in between a little bit here and there and that helps break up any type of randomness you might you might get on a stamp pattern we're going to end up, we'll come back, so we'll do, we'll stamp this today, and then, you know, the homeowner, Jim, actually got it all formed up, like I said in the beginning, he did a really good job forming this, he put it, he put up the 2 by 8s he put in the 2-inch styrofoam, he, he tied the rebar, he set it all to grade, he got the slope on it, so that kind of saved us a lot of work, that saved us, you know, one day of work from showing up and getting it prepped, and then we'll come back. We'll come back the next day, usually after stamping, and we'll get it saw cut and washed. And you'll see a little bit of that right at the end of the video. You'll see us kind of washing it. But it's typically, it's typically like a, at least a three-day process. You know, the first day is is the, is the prep work, the forming, the getting it all ready to go. 
The second day is definitely the pouring and the stamping. And then actually four days. The third day is the sawing and the cleaning. And then we usually, if it's a nice day out, if it's in the summer, if it's, uh, you know, it doesn't rain in between, we can usually come back the fourth day and just squirt on a couple light coats of sealer just to help protect it. And then once it does cure out, three or four weeks from now, you can come back and spray another coat on. But you don't want to get too much sealer on too thick, too early, or that could that could make the sealer fail. But we, we do like to get a little bit on just to help cure the slab a little bit and to help protect it from any other type of dirt or debris or if people are working around it, you know, just protect the surface a little bit. We ended up having to wait a little bit for the shade part. So we, you can see where the, right where the sun in the shade stopped, it got quite a bit softer there in the shade. So we just stopped stamping, uh, probably waited 20 or 30 minutes. And now we're just going down this edge in the shade. And it's really only taken, I'm the lightest one out there. So um, they, we decided that I would go out down and do it. So the guys wouldn't leave any footprints or anything. And, you know, we wanted to, we didn't want too much time in between. So I'm jumping on there with the stamping shoes and I don't know, I'm probably 40 or 50 pounds lighter than Darren or Luke. So that helps a little bit too, getting the edges rolled in advance with the stamp roller. And then just blending in the stamp. We'll load the stamps. You can see the guys are kind of loading the stamps in the truck. We'll bring them back to the shop dirty like this. Then we'll we'll take them out, throw them down on the driveway, and pressure wash those and get all that release cleaned off them so they'll be ready for the next job. But it works pretty good. You know, those guys will clean up everything on the outside. And by the time I get down to the end here, you know, we're just we're picked up and we're just ready to go and get home and change the clothes, <laughs> take a shower and change the clothes pretty much. It almost goes, it almost goes to almost like... All right, so we got it finished up. Like I said, we had to wait for the shade for quite a while. But sometimes that's just what you got to do depending on where the sun is. You can see it's quite, it's quite a messy process. So you're going to want your mask, your gloves, and some hopefully some old clothes, but they're going to get messed up. We usually just clean up with Dawn dish detergent and water. All right, so here we are the next day cleaning up. We're getting, you know, we'll buzz it with the pressure washer. Get most of the release off first with that, then we'll we'll mix up some Dawn in a five gallon bucket and just kind of flood it, almost like just basically like washing a car. So, if you want to learn more about it, check out the Concrete Underground. The link for that will be down below. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you on the next one.